Hey y'all, my name is Cassandra Color. This is my first makeup tutorial ever. This is inspired by Samantha Ravendahl. She had a rainbow skull on her Instagram and I saw the picture and I was inspired, so I hope you enjoy. So here I'm just adding on my foundation. I just used the L'Oreal Lumi, it's my favorite. Prime my lips with a little bit of lip gloss and I put a bake under my eyes with the No Color RCMA powder. Now I'm just adding in a transition color. This is Creme Brulee by Makeup Geek. Just putting that all over the crease with a fluffy brush. And now I'm going in with the pink. This is Passion, Passionate, Passionate by MAC. And then I'm putting that all over in the crease and blending it out. Now I'm trying to decide which blue I want. And I'm deciding between Makeup Geek Mermaid and Milani Bella Teal. And I'm seeing that the Milani is a drugstore brand and it's coming off better on camera. So I was like, well, okay, let's use that already then. So now I'm just going to go in and put Milk, which is a jumbo eye pencil by NYX, all over the lid. And that will increase the intensity of the blue when I put it on. And I'm packing the blue over that jumbo eye pencil. Just making sure I have an even distribution all around. And then I'm going to go through and blend out those edges with that pink again, just to make sure that everything looks blended well. And now I'm adding in a purple just in the outer corner, just add some dimension. It's actually a purple from a makeup palette I got uh, from Burlington. It's called Beauty Treats. It's just a really cheap brand, has some good colors. So this is just a purple in the outer corner, and then I'm just going to go through and blend out that pink again, make sure it looks good, all blended together well. Now I'm going to touch up my eyebrows, trim them up, and I'm going to go in with a teal body paint right in those eyebrows. Nothing really precise about this too much. Just filled them in with a real small brush, filled that whole eyebrow in, went and powdered my forehead because I noticed some creasing going on. And I'm filling in the other brow on the other side. And then after this, I'm going to go on with some eyeliner around the whole border of the eyebrows. And it's basically like a reversed winged liner. It's just the other direction. And I'm just outlining it, making sure it's not too thick of a line, not too thin, consistency of the line all the way through. I even put some black in the front portions of the eyebrow just to give it some heaviness there in the front. Kind of match it all the way through. And I'm going back in with some body paint just to get rid of some of the lines that I don't like that I did from the eyeliner. And now I'm just doing the other side. Started with the bottom and then I do the top line, connect them, release pressure when you get towards the end to make a good wing. And I was having some trouble with my left eyebrow because it's hard to do your left eyebrow, which is all the way on the side of your face with your right hand. And then I am going in to do my winged liner with the same liner. This is the NYX liquid liner. It just has a great applicator on it, and that's why it's my favorite. And I'm just going to do that on both sides. And then I'm just going back in and making sure that all my edges are blended. And then I'm going to add in a brow bone highlight also, Shimma Shimma by Makeup Geek. It's just my favorite brow bone highlight. And touch up that eyeliner, look at myself, make sure it's good, wipe away the bake. Now we're not worried about fallout anymore. So next I'm going to go in and smudge that bottom line there. We're going to put in that passionate by mac again dance a little bit that's needed and i'm pushing in some blackout by urban decay there in the very bottom and then the waterline oh hey noel she helped with my eyebrow then i put that milk jumbo pencil in the waterline and then i'm going to do the nose i'm going in with that liquid liner again the same one that i use for my eyebrows and my eyes i use it for my entire face for this entire video for this nose portion Nothing too in particular about it. It's just a ball on the bottom and two points on the top. 
when I first did it, I didn't really like the lines on my nose, but then it grew on me and I liked the way they looked. They were a weird angle, which is kind of okay for a skull. You don't really want it to be too perfect in some areas so that it looks more realistic. So I just filled that in and now I'm doing my cheeks and my teeth. So before I actually drew on this black portion, I took a white eyeliner pencil, just a regular wooden one, and outlined what I wanted to do, and then I went over it with the liquid liner to make sure it was what I wanted. Now here is a very important step. I made reference lines to where I wanted my teeth before I started drawing them in. It made it much easier to draw in the long run throughout this video, and I didn't know really where I wanted to do my teeth, how many I wanted on each side, how they were going to be centered. Ideally, it's good to start with the teeth in the middle of your mouth so that they become evenly spaced over time. But for me, in this look, I made reference lines starting from the left to the right, and that worked out well for me. But typically, you want to start from the middle. So I just made the reference lines, and then after that, I just started going in and kind of drawing sort of where I wanted the teeth and here I'm just using very, very light pressure and just kind of rough drafting in those teeth, just trying to kind of figure out what size I wanted them, how long the line underneath them was going to be, basically little candy corn shapes. And I wanted mine to taper down into one line instead of two lines like a typical tooth. So here I'm just rough drafting in those teeth one by one, little shapes. They don't have to be perfect. I'm not using a lot of pressure so I can go back in and correct this later on. Some people will count the teeth and make sure that you have the same amount of teeth on each side. I did not worry about that. I just made sure that they were evenly spaced and went along with what I was trying to do. So now I have all of them rough drafted in and I'm just going over with the liner again to just kind of define that line to the intensity that I wanted them to be. And then you get some eyeliner on your elbow. This is part of that makeup tutorial. You need to put eyeliner on your elbow for this to work and then wipe it off and wonder how it got there. How did that even happen? I don't know. Anyways, so I'm drawing in those teeth again, just putting those lines in a little bit darker at a time, just a little bit at a time. This whole thing took four and a half hours. It took some time and I took my time so that it looked nice. So it's okay if you mess up. These little pointy Q-tips were definitely a lifesaver throughout this thing. There was a few times I made some lines that I felt like were just off a little bit. Just wipe it away, redo it, put a little foundation down, then put that liner down again. No big deal. and You can fix it. No problem. So I'm just going in. I'm thickening up those lines, making sure I like the placement of them. And then I kind of started with them really light, really soft. And right now I'm to a point where they're just kind of typical lines for the teeth. And then eventually I make them thicker just to add some more contrast in between the teeth. And a few lines up there again, I just didn't like the way that they were faced, so I just redid them, no big deal. And I'm going back in with that liner to increase the intensity. This is honestly the most time consuming part of the whole thing is just getting those teeth, the shape that you want, the little ball shape, and then that little wing on the bottom to be going in the right direction. Now what happened here is I was fixing this tooth right here and the lines actually got a little bit thick on me and at first I was a little bit upset with myself like oh I'm about to read this whole tooth but then I was like I don't know do I like that 
I think I do. I think I like that. I even filled in underneath the tooth a little bit. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go with it. So I wound up making every single tooth thicker. So I probably literally went back and forth with going over the teeth four or five different times, rough drafting them in, lining them in, making sure the lines were faced the right way. And now I'm making them thicker just to add more contrast, more contrast, more color. That's what it's about. So I'm just going through and I'm making them all thicker. Not only am I thickening up the, or like thickening the line underneath, I am going underneath the tooth as well, just to give it more of a tooth shape. And now here I'm going in with a silver metallic body paint that I bought from a body paint store. Really glad I did that underneath the glitter. It just gives it kind of a good foundation of a shine where the actual tooth is before you put the glitter in over it. So I just go in with every tooth. I'm just using a really small brush that I got from a paint store. And I'm just adding in each tooth. And here I'm going in with Urban Decay Blackout to do the shading. And what you want to do is you want to concentrate that black towards the outer portion to make it look like it's a hole in your cheek. And then I'm putting passionate by mag the pink i used on my eyeballs in both of these spots and for this upper portion of this mouth hole you want the pink to be more concentrated towards the top and then disperse out and let almost a little section of that bottom piece just be naked i didn't even add anything like a white or anything i just left it naked and i made sure that the pink was more compact up there in that corner as to create dimension like a highlight almost and then I'm just filling that in and blending it around and I do both sides that way doing the other side just with that Urban Decay Blackout and that Passionate by Pink. And now I'm adding in the Urban Decay Glitter Liner on top of that silver metallic body paint that I used just to start that glitter buildup, that shine. And that leaves kind of a tacky surface and now I'm patting on some loose glitter on top of that. And then I'm gonna put some Bella Teal by that Milani I put on my eyes, on my nose, just to add kind of a weird shine. So here I put in Lemon Drop already in my inner corners and then onto my teeth and I'm being poked by a brush. What do you want? What do you want? What? What? You're a bitch. Get out of here. No. Anyways. So <laughs> that was my best friend poking me right there. So now I'm gonna go on with these colors. So that was Lemon Drop by Makeup Geek, that the yellow. The orange is by a Wet n Wild palette called Art in the Streets. And over here in this very corner on the other side of my face, I'm doing purple. And that purple is from that Beauty Treats palette that I used on my eyeball. And oops, messed up. That's okay, I'm gonna fix it. So here is some red. This is a sugar pill color. I bought it on the Makeup Geek website. It's very pigmented and it's called Love Plus. And then this blue over here is called Gonzo from the Electric Palette by Urban Decay. It's a very pretty, very vibrant blue. And then that green in between is Venom by Makeup Geek. Makes a very good transition. So we've got purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna shade those cheek holes to make them seem dimensional. So for this pink, I'm actually not going to use the Passionate by MAC. I'm going to use a pink called Savage from the Electric Palette. It has a more vibrant pink type of feel. And basically I just put it underneath and on top, leaving a little portion right there where I'm going to highlight. And I just took some foundation, put it on a plate, grabbed a real small painting brush, and just added a little highlight line between there so that it seems like that's a high point. And I do that on both sides and then I'm just going to shade it a little bit more. And I was going to just leave this pink electric palette Savage painting on the bottom. And it looks really good like this. Honestly, you could just stop here. But I felt like it looked really bottom heavy. 
as a look all together. So eventually I brought that same savage pink from the electric palette on my forehead and temples. And one thing you can do to make this blend also, which I did, I took creme brulee from Makeup Geek, which blends anything out. It's just magic. It's just to blend that pink out. Some of these bright colors can be a little bit harder to blend because they are so pigmented. And then I took some yellow up there on my forehead also, just to add some more colors because I needed that. Now I'm putting on my lashes. This is the Iconic Lashes by the House of Lashes using the House of Lashes glue. Put those right on there and now I'm going to take a bath in my setting spray. This is the Urban Decay Chill All Nighter Setting Spray and now I am feeling myself. Hey! <laughs> Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Like, share, comment, share with your friends. I spent a lot of time on this and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.